That's so cropped. It's not my best work. I feel like I've exhausted a lot of my summer knitting capability. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Knee Knits. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting and today is podcast episode number 17 where I talk about everything that I've been knitting for the past few weeks. So it's the end of July and I have a lot to share since the last time I saw you guys. Lots of projects on the needles. I even have one project that I started and finished in between the last time I filmed. So I hope you're ready for an episode full of summer knits, tank tops, as well as some new yarn and and we'll get started. I am super excited to show you guys my finished camisole number five. This is a pattern I've been working on since the beginning of June. It's a tank top by My Favorite Things Knitwear, and I knit it in Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino in the shade Dusty Blue Whale. So it is off the needles, it has been blocked, it has been worn a few times, and I am loving it. So it's basically, if you haven't heard of camisole number five, it's this pretty unique structured tank top. It has a very high neckline it is all over two by two rib and it has these very narrow like sloping shoulder lines i don't know if shoulder lines is the correct word but you can see it comes in very narrow at the front and as well as the back and as usual i'll put in some better clips so you guys can see it you know from far away on me but i am really impressed with this pattern it's been on my knit list for a while now it's just so stunning and polished and I feel like it's very unique from a lot of other knit tank patterns. So I'll first quickly go over some specs of this project and then tell you how I felt about the pattern, the yarn, and the project as a whole. So for me, I knit the size small, which was the suggested size for my bust circumference. This is a negative ease pattern. And for the size small, I only ended up using two and about an eighth of a ball of Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino. So I bought three balls and I have a lot of the third ball left over. I knit this on the suggested needle size, which is three millimeter needles and I was able to meet gauge in the two by two rib with that needle size. Because this is an all over ribbed tank top and it's meant to fit with negative ease, there is a lot of stretching that goes on with the final product. So as you're knitting it, it does look really small, but when it's finished and you put it on, it immediately stretches out to fit. And of course, blocking will help open up that rib as well. So before I blocked this tank top, I measured the width across it while it was laying flat and I got about eight and a half inches across, which just seems like way too small. But after blocking it and wearing it once, laying flat without stretching it, it measures about 12 and a half inches across. And on me, this does have negative ease. I think it fits very well, but I am happy that it's not too tight. Like there is a lot more that it could stretch if it needed to. I feel like it hugs very well without being constricting and it has the potential to stretch out more if I need it, you know. It's not super tight around the waist either. I think in general, there was a lot of leeway with the fit of this tank top, which I really like. In my past episodes, I talked a lot about doing the neckline and the armholes, so I won't go back into too much detail about those things, but I will tell you guys that since I last saw you guys, I was mentioning wanting to redo the neckline, so I did do that. So the neckline you're looking at today is different from the one you guys saw last episode. Last episode, I showed you guys, it seemed like there were too many stitches it was kind of ruffling and I didn't really want it to ruffle at all so I actually undid the whole neckline and redid it. The pattern does suggest a three quarters pickup rate for the neckline which is picking up three stitches for every four rows that gives you about 75 percent stitches around for every row and that was the rate that gave me that little bit of a ruffle it was too many stitches so i undid it at about a two-thirds pickup rate so i picked up two stitches for every three rows and that gave me a much better fitting neckline there's absolutely no ruffling in the front nor the back and i think it looks a lot nicer so I'm really happy that I made that decision to undo it and redo it with less stitches. I did not have any issues with that pickup rate for the armhole, so I followed the pattern exactly for the armband, and I feel like it fits pretty well, and I don't have any issues of tensioning or stitch count there. 
Overall, this pattern I would recommend. It definitely has a different type of construction than what I'm used to. I think the end result is definitely worth it. I love the fingering weight fabric. It feels very nice. It feels very comfortable. This is a 70% cotton, 30% merino yarn blend, and it is the first time that I've used knitting for all of cotton merino, and I really enjoyed it. I feel like I was pleasantly surprised because it has such a high cotton content. I was worried if it would feel too cottony while knitting. I personally don't enjoy knitting with 100% cotton. I find it's too stiff and too rough on the hands, but this just felt very buttery smooth. It had elasticity that I wasn't expecting it to have, I presume from the merino content and the fabric that it created. It's just very comfortable to wear. I've been wearing it in some pretty high heats. We've been having a hot and humid summer here in Boston, and I've been wearing this out, and I'm pretty comfortable in it. Obviously, it's not the most cooling tank top I could wear, but compared to other knit pieces I do feel like it is very comfortable. Now knowing that it is mostly cotton I am a little worried about if this will stretch out over time because although there is merino to give it that elasticity it's only 30% so I feel like this tank top does have the potential to stretch out. I am worried if around the underarms and the bust if it will like stretch out and eventually look too loose over time but I can only wait for time to tell if that will happen. So that's one thing I'll have to keep an eye on as well as pilling. I feel like this fabric does have potential to pill, but again, I just haven't worn it enough to see any of that yet. I forgot to talk about the bind off. I did the suggested bind off in the pattern, which is just binding off in pattern. So knit every knit, purl every purl, and doing a standard bind off. I was fine with that. I think it looks nice. I made sure to keep it loose so I could still stretch out the fabric as much as I needed to, to you know, get over my body and stuff. Because I know this tank top, I'm mostly going to style it tucked into high-waisted bottoms. I knew that the standard bind off would be fine for me. I usually don't go for standard bind offs when I know that an edge is going to be visible. I love tubular bind off and will use it as much as I possibly can. So if I had made this to fit where I knew I wasn't going to be tucking it in, let's say it was more cropped, I probably would have set it up to do the two by two tubular bind off. But because I know I'm going to be tucking this in all of the time, I went with the standard bind off and I'm very happy with it. So yeah, that's just about everything I can say about my camisole number five. I'm really happy with it, really excited that I get to have this as part of my wardrobe and I'm also just loving the color, this dusty blue whale. It reminds me of denim, especially in combination with the cotton feel of the fabric. It's just like, it's very nice. I really like the color and Knitting for Olive has a lot of beautiful colors that I feel like you can't go wrong in the cotton merino. And I'm definitely gonna be using the cotton merino again. I mean, I don't have any projects in mind for the rest of this season, but it'll definitely be on my to purchase list in the future if I need a fingering weight cotton blend yarn for another summer knit. So really excited to get more use out of the yarn and I will have to find something to do with that three quarters left of a ball that I still have. Maybe a nice hair scarf or headband would be fun. You know, a nice summer accessory. Okay, my next finished object is actually the one that you haven't seen yet because I started it and finished it in one week and I still can't believe it. I'm probably just as shocked as you guys might be with me saying that, but this is the Vegas top by Paula Strict, who is also Suzanne Mueller, and this is for my sister. So at the end of last podcast, I was telling you guys how my sister wanted me to knit her a tank top, and she actually knew exactly what pattern she wanted. She found it on Pinterest. Even though she's not a knitter, she found a knitting pattern, and she says, this one, can you make it? And I said, sure. So yeah, it is somehow done, but let's talk about the process, I guess. So in terms of picking the pattern, I just mentioned that she had picked out the pattern, so that was pretty easy. You know, if anything, that was the best case scenario for a knitter to someone, for someone to know exactly what pattern they want as opposed to them wanting like an idea and maybe they send you inspiration but then you have to search for like a corresponding knitting pattern but didn't have to do any of that which is pretty nice. I think she just wanted like a nice basic summer top that she could wear with you know any sort of bottom whether it be like a fun pattern skirt or a solid you know pair of jean shorts and the yarn that I picked out in conjunction with her was Santa Scarn Line 
And this is one of my all-time favorite summer yarns. I probably mentioned it every single podcast episode this season, and for good reason. I just really enjoy knitting with it. It is a cotton linen viscose blend. It's about 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen. This is the regular version, just plain line. So this is a heavy DK weight. Sometimes it's considered worsted weight yarn. And I got the color putty, which was what my sister had requested. I think originally she wanted white, kind of like the sample photo of the pattern. But when I went to the yarn store, I laid out all of the whites and off whites that they had. And she was drawn to putty the most, which I like a lot too, because it has a lot of dimension. All of the different fibers in Line take the dye differently, so pretty much all of their colors have some sort of variation. Like you can see there's cream, but also some white in there, and I think it makes a really nice fabric. So my sister and I are pretty similar sizes, so this is the pattern size small, and she wanted it super cropped. So those two things in combination with the fact that this is a DK weight knit on four and a half millimeter needles made this tank top absolutely fly by. It's a standard construction top down, so you do the back first and then you do the front shoulder panels and then you connect at the neckline before you connect at the underarm and then it's just stockinette till you reach the end. All of the edging on this tank top is applied I-cord as well as on the sleeves and on the hem. And yeah, this just flew off my needles. I wasn't trying to knit it quickly. I wasn't trying to meet a deadline. My sister didn't request it by any certain time. So I just casted it on and was motivated enough to work on it a lot. And I think it's also because I have been knitting nothing but fingering weight summer pieces and just having these giant four and a half millimeter needles in my hands just made me really excited again for these DK weight projects to come up and yeah, I just knit it up really quickly. So with that, I only ended up using three balls of this line, which is surprising. I bought five. I thought I was gonna need five. Again, I didn't expect my sister to want it as cropped as she did want it. So I did have her measure like one of her favorite tank tops for like a size comparison. I said, whatever length that that tank top is that you like, let me know. And she was like, oh yeah, it's only eight inches from the underarm to the hem. And I was like, eight inches? That's so cropped, but that's what she wanted. So <laughs> that's what I did. I actually ended up knitting this like longer than that and had to frog back because by the time she replied to my text with the length, I was already past that. So super quick knit, um, pretty easy to follow pattern. I did have some gauge discrepancy. So my row gauge was a lot different than the suggested row gauge and all of the construction of the front panel, like the, the shoulder shaping is based on row count. So I just had to do some knitting math while making it to adjust my number of rows to match the intended length because I did not want the arms to be too small because no one wants tight armholes. That's like probably the most uncomfortable thing you can have in a tank top. So. Yeah, that was the only mod that I did, obviously besides you know cropping the length than what was originally suggested. So I say this is done, I have not blocked it. I have tried it on for myself because like I said before, my sister and I are pretty similar sizes. So that definitely also made it pretty easy to knit because I could just try it on myself and knew that if it fit me, it was gonna fit her. If it wasn't fitting me, I knew it wasn't gonna fit her. So I've tried this on, I do need to block it. I am still a little concerned about the armholes just because I think my I-cord edge might be a little bit too tight and I may have to undo it and redo it with more stitches to loosen it up a little bit. But I'm going to block it first to make sure that, you know, there's a chance that blocking could open those up a little bit and maybe it won't be as tight. So yeah, this is my sister's Vegas top. I am looking forward to finishing this and sending it to her. She doesn't live near me, so it's gotta go in the mail and she'll hopefully send me some photos or videos with her wearing it and I will share those with you guys. You can see the final product on her. So yeah, second finished object, surprise quick knit, oops, of the summer. And that's my Vegas top.
So now we'll get into my works in progress. I have a few things on the needles. They're all very summery. And the first summer top I have to share is my Kutar top. So the Kutar top is a pattern by Sari Nordlin. It is this halter style top with lace at the front and the back, and then it's stockinette all below that. And last time you guys saw this, I had the first lace panel done and I had started the second lace panel. You can see I have made a lot of progress since then. So I have since finished the second panel, joined in the round, completed the straps and now I'm just working on the body and I have a lot to say about this pattern both good and bad things not about the pattern per se but about like the process and the project this is definitely proven to be a pretty finicky project I don't know if it's just me or the pattern construction is new to me but first let's talk about the good things the good thing out of this whole project, definitely the yarn. The yarn is amazing. I am using Santa's Garn Tin Line. I know, another mention of it. This is the fingering weight version of the yarn I just shared with you guys. Same exact fiber content. I'm using the color Pearl Gray, which is pretty much as it is described. It's a gray color. I would call it more silver because this yarn has a lot of shine. It's got an incredible amount of drape. It is really easy to knit with very minimal splitting. I feel like the definition of the lace is really nice. I can see this being very comfortable to wear in the summer and yeah, all around would suggest tin line for any fingering weight summer pattern. I am curious to see how it compares and wear to knitting for all of pure silk. I feel like I definitely enjoy my experience with the line more than the pure silk. So if the fabric is pretty comparable, I think in the future, if a pattern calls for knitting for all of pure silk, I might opt for the tin line from Santa's Garn instead, but we'll see. For sizing for this tank top, I actually fell between sizes two and three. This is a suggested ease pattern of zero inches. And to get that, if I pick size two, it would have negative ease. And if I pick size three, it would have a little bit of positive ease. So I cast it on for size three, but turns out that sizes two and three actually start the exact same. The whole lace panel is the exact same, stitch count and all, and the differences in sizing actually come when you cast on for the underarm stitches. So knowing that, I actually use that opportunity to adjust the amount of cast on stitches at the underarm to make it perfectly fit for my measurement, which I thought was pretty cool. I just did some math to figure out how many stitches I would need to cast on with my gauge to get a stitch count that would equate to my bust circumference at the end. And as you would guess, the number of stitches that I had to cast on at the underarm just ended up being a number that was pretty much in between the numbers for sizes two and sizes three. So I'm actually doing like a hybrid sizing there. And now I'm just working on the stockinette body. This pattern does call for increases as you go down to give it sort of an A-line shape that's wider at the bottom. I'm actually not doing those. I'm just keeping it straight for the whole length of the tank top. That's just my personal style. I think I see myself tucking in this tank top more than I see it not tucked in. So because of that, I figured it made more sense to not have the A-line shape. All right, now let's get on to all of the <laughs> finicky things that happen with this tank top. I feel like most of the problems come from gauge and tensioning and the yarn just showing every little mistake. So I don't think it's a pattern thing. I think this is just a construction that I'm not used to, haven't done before, so I didn't really know what to anticipate. So let's see, let's start off first with the underarm. So the underarms, I had like the worst tensioning. You have to do sort of like an I-cord cast on, which I don't know if that's the correct term for what I did, but basically you're casting on underarm stitches while still maintaining that I-cord edge that is throughout this whole like panel. And I feel like the tensioning was all off. You can't really see it now because I've since gone back with an end and did sort of like a duplicate stitch to tighten it up. And I think it looks fine now, but I'll throw in a picture of what it looked like before. And I was just really like unhappy with how it looked, but it was after I had knit like a lot of the body. So it wasn't really anything that I could go back and frog and redo. I mean, I could have redone it, but I didn't have time for that. I didn't want to. I am lucky that 
stitching it up seem to have closed it off quite nicely. I think you might be able to see here that, you know, it's not perfect, but from far away, I don't really think you can tell. Also, you might remember from last episode that this top edge on both these panels of stitches were originally done with a provisional cast on. I have since taken that provisional cast on out and sort of converted that into an applied I cord edge. Now, if you look closely, it's not my best work. It does not look good at all. And let me see if the camera will pick it up at all, both the front and the back. So I don't know if you can see, but you might be able to tell that that last row of stitches right before the I cord, they're really loose, they're really wonky. So I did the suggested provisional cast on in the pattern, which is from a knitting magazine. And it says to do this provisional cast on with two needles held together so you get these really big loops and it does also say that don't worry these stitches may look really big and uneven but they'll even out after you knit them lies lies at least for this pattern because you can see here that they did not even out the i cord really just emphasizes that you have all these loose loops and i think my only saving grace is that from far away you can't tell so I'm just gonna leave it at that I'm not gonna redo it at all it is what it is but I was pretty unhappy with how that provisional cast on ended up in the I cord I have done other patterns with provisional cast on but I've done the crochet provisional cast on and I have not experienced the same issue so I think I might not be using that provisional cast on again. I just am really unhappy with the finished look of it with the I cord. Now it might be that in this pattern, you just go immediately from the provisional cast on stitches into the I cord bind off. Maybe if those stitches were knit for a few rounds, they would have evened out, but I mean, I had to do what the pattern said. I wasn't gonna knit more rows before doing the I cord. So yeah, that's the I cord edge at the top. Again, not super visible from afar, but definitely visible up close. Also with this tank top construction, there are a lot of stitches that have to go on stitch markers, mostly for the I cord, and you have to go back and kitchener them later. Things like at the underarm, you'll have some stitches, like literally just three stitches that sit on stitch markers until you can go back with a new piece of yarn and kitchener them together. The join at the like, where the straps join the top of the tank top. There are some like provisional cast on that you have to do with just three stitches, and then you'll have to kitchener the stitches for the straps later. So there's just like a lot that goes on with the construction of this tank top, a lot of opportunity for like stitches to have weird tensioning. And I think if you work with a plant fiber like I am, the cotton and linen, it's not forgiving. It'll show every little It'll like stretched out stitch it'll show everywhere where you put something on hold like let's see if I can show you guys this up here you can see like how that stitch is like really big and you know I do have all these ends which like I did with the underarm I'm just gonna use those ends to tighten everything up and it should look fine at the end and again from afar you can't really tell but it's just you know, little things like that, where if you're perfectionist type A like me, you might get a little frustrated. Not that I got frustrated with this. It's just like, you know, I'm used to things working out pretty well. So maybe this was just a reality check. Like not every knitting project is going to turn out absolutely perfect. And sometimes you may have the motivation to undo them. And sometimes you just gotta live with it. And I think with this tank top, I'm living with a lot of tension issues that you know I think it's fine not every project is going to be perfect and from afar if you can't tell then I can't tell like, I am curious if I knit this in a more elastic yarn like a merino maybe a hundred percent merino in fingering weight if I would not have had a lot of these same issues with big open loose stitches and gaps and if I did a different provisional cast on that might have also helped with this issue um Oh yeah, another big issue was with the sizing for the length from the top to the underarm. So you knit both of these panels flat and then you join for the underarm and then that determines, you know, the length that you have from 
like the, your neck to your underarm and it tells you a suggested length in the pattern like oh knit this front panel until it's like x amount of inches long and i just knit to that length i was not thinking because this is like a critical fit length and I just knit it to what the pattern said. I didn't even like try it on my body. I didn't even hold it up to my body. I just assumed that it would fit and it does not. <laughs> it is definitely too deep for my underarm. So I actually had to accommodate for that with the strap. So like there's like a lot of different ways that you can adjust the length on this tank top. So. After you finish the lace panel, if you don't want it to be super like low at your underarm, you can make the stockinette portion before you join in the round shorter. You can also accommodate for that with the strap length. So obviously, depending on how long you make the straps will dictate how low or how high that this tank top sits on your neck. So my underarm is way too big you can clearly, when I try it on, you can clearly see like my bra, like a pretty large amount sticking out. So I made my straps as short as possible. So basically this top sits like as high as it possibly can on my neck without choking me, which is not what I intended. But I discovered this like way too late. I had already knit like several inches of the body after joining in the round. Again, this is all on me. I don't know why I didn't think to try it on earlier with the length that I was knitting. I just thought it would fit. And yeah, so if you're knitting this top, I definitely suggest you try it on or at least hold it up to yourself before you connect in the round and then definitely try it on after you join in the round to see how low it's gonna sit on your underarm. I, After I did this, I went back and read Ravelry Project comments and a lot of people said that they found that the length before joining in the round was also too long for them. So they had to adjust either by knitting less rounds or making the straps shorter. So there's just a lot of things going on with this tank top that I didn't necessarily want, but it's okay. It still looks pretty good. It still fits pretty well. So I'm not unhappy with this project. I just think there are a lot of, there's lots of room for improvement, but this was a learning experience. So I think that's about everything I can say about the Kutar top. I am pretty close to finishing. So the hem is like a nice folded hem. So I don't know what length I'm going to knit this to. I have to try it on again and see how much longer I have to knit. But as you can see here, I am pretty close to the end. So I am excited to cast this off, block it, weave in all my ends, and then show you guys the final fit. My next project is a new cast on and I have casted on the Audrey top by Petite Knit. This is what we have so far. So not much to show you guys. I'll quickly talk about the Audrey top in general. So this is one of Petite Knit's newer summer pattern releases. It's a pretty basic halter tank top, kind of a similar fit to the Kutar top. And Petite Knit knit hers in an Issagur linen yarn. It's 100% linen, a fingering weight held double. And I was really fascinated by the yarn and the fabric. I have never knit with 100% linen before. I have heard a lot of things about the knitting process and the knitted fabric that I just wanted to give it a shot myself. It's definitely very different. So. The yarn that I picked up is Quince & Co Sparrow. This is a 100% linen yarn fingering weight as well. I actually couldn't get any of the Issachar. I would have tried it if I could, but funny thing is I feel like right after I ordered the Quince & Co yarn, I rechecked the website that carries Issachar and then suddenly they were carrying the suggested yarn from the Audrey top. So. You can buy it now if you want. I'll link it below from Wool & Co. They have a ton of Issachar yarn, but this is, I think, a pretty comparable substitute. So I got the color Eclipse, which is just this jet black yarn, and I've, I have some thoughts. Let's talk about the yarn first. If you are unfamiliar with linen, it is a plant fiber, and it's very stiff. I feel like the yarn to me resembles more of like a cord than yarn. You can see it does not have like a lot of springiness at all. It is plied, but I feel like it's hard to tell that it's plied. Although if you untwist it, you can then see all of the plies right there. And very stiff, it kind of drapes weirdly. Like it doesn't like to, 
fall on itself very well. It just kind of like collapses onto whatever surface that it's on. The wound up balls are also very interesting. You know, they're very stiff. They also have the ability to like collapse very easily. I have the tag just stuck in the middle to sort of help prevent the ball from collapsing on itself and potentially tangling. I have read online a few tips on working with linen yarn. Let's see, a few suggestions. You can first make sure you work the yarn in your hands before you use it. Someone suggested to me that if you massage the skein, that'll help with the knitting experience. I've also read online that you can soak the skein in water and then let it completely dry before winding it up and then working with it because linen softens immensely with washing and with wearing. So those things like giving it movement and giving it water will help soften it up. I did not do the soaking, but I did, you know, try to work the skein in my hand a little bit before winding it up. And it's also suggested to work with wooden needles because it is a very slippery yarn. So I'm using my Knitter's Pride Dreams needles, which are birch wood, and I'm finding the experience to be Pretty nice, I can only imagine if I had knit with my metal needles that I normally use, the stitches probably would be flying everywhere. So I'm using wood needles and ex enjoying the experience there. Some other first impressions of this linen yarn, it feels very sturdy. It kind of reminds me of like cable cord that you would use to make like beaded bracelets from camp as a child. Not like the knotted friendship bracelets with embroidery thread, but just like, if you needed to put beads on something, I feel like they would whip out a yarn kind of similar to this. Maybe something that was more like hemp based for the <laughs> camp bracelets. And this sort of reminds me of that. It feels very sturdy. I feel like I could not rip this with my hand if I wanted to. It feels like you could tie up, you know, anything you needed to with this and it's not gonna go anywhere. Now in the fabric, I feel like I have that same feeling. It feels very sturdy, does not feel like it has a lot of stretch. It was curling a ton. I actually gave this a quick steam last night because I knew I wasn't really gonna be able to show you guys anything if it was curling up on itself so much. So yeah, I gave it a quick steam and it did soften a lot with the steaming. So I feel like at first it was very like stiff and now it has a little bit of flow. And I know that that flow will increase a ton when I actually soak this in water for a wet block. So the Audrey top is knit from the bottom up and it does have a raw edge, just like a raw stockinette edge. There's no ribbing, there's no eye cord that gets added at the end. It's just you cast on and start knitting. So. That I was not expecting. I also didn't know when I bought this pattern that it was knit from the bottom up, but I don't mind it. I feel like because this is my first 100% linen knitting experience, I'm kind of glad that my beginnings of this project is just in like a straight stockinette tube because then I can really get used to the yarn and I don't have to do all of the shaping or the knitting flat first and I can really get used to the yarn and stockinette before I do all of the shaping at the end of the project. So although I'm normally against bottom-up construction, I don't actually mind it in this tank top. So I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but the Audrey top is knit with the fingering weight yarn held double. So I'm knitting this on four millimeter needles. Again, similar to the Vegas top, this nice DK weight knit is such a refresher from all of the fingering weight projects that I've been doing all summer. So I am hoping that this will go by pretty quickly. I do have to take some breaks when knitting this, like I can't knit on this for hours and I think a lot of people have the same experience when working with linen. And for me, it's not because of the friction on my finger where I tension my yarn, which I know some people have experienced, but it's actually just with how I have to tension like everything in general. I think because the yarn is so stiff, you really have to make tight stitches to get a nice even fabric. I feel like if you are loose with the knitting, this linen will show a lot of irregularities with the yarn, the stitches won't really come out very neat. So I feel like naturally I'm like tightening up my grip and tightening up my tension to accommodate for the very stiff yarn. And that as a whole causes my hands to need more breaks than when I'm knitting with like a very springy wool that doesn't need as much tight knitting as this linen. But I think in general, I've had a pretty easy time knitting with this. Like I've been flying through the stockinette. I'm looking forward to getting to the shaping portion of this tank top 
and have been enjoying the linen experience maybe more so than knitting with cotton which is really surprising i don't think that's a common experience maybe because it's so like different so i do kind of like the shine on this yarn i feel like it gives it a nice texture that's not like other things that I've knit with, I feel like the finished product is going to look really nice and be really comfortable to wear. And yeah, like I said before, I hope this project goes by quickly, trying to get a lot of my summer pieces done so I can actually wear them before the summer ends. So hopefully next time you guys see this, there'll be a lot more progress. And yeah, so we'll check in next time. My next work in progress is a test knit, actually. I haven't test knit something in forever, so I was really excited to sign up for this. And this is the beginnings of the Versailles scarf by Juliette Pico Designs. And Jules, I actually met her at a Boston knitting meetup, and I was super excited to test for her. This is a really cool pattern, just like a lacy summer scarf, and it can be worn as like a necktie, like she has in the sample photo, or as a headband, which I think is what I will use it for. And it's knit out of fingering weight yarn, so I thought it was the perfect use for my leftover knitting for olive pure silk and dusty artichoke that I had just finished using for my cumulus tea. So there's not much to show here. I've just barely gotten into the lace chart. It's pretty interesting construction because it's a long skinny scarf, but you actually knit it like the long way. So a lot of stitches to cast on, but you use the cable cast on so you don't have to worry about measuring out the correct length of long tail cast on. So I am doing the long length, which is supposed to be 40 inches long. There is also a short length in the pattern, which is about 32 inches long. So depending on what you want in the finished product, you can pick either the long or the short length. The test knit is due this week, so <laughs> I have to get knitting on this and hopefully we'll show you guys in the next episode what it looks like all finished and all blocked. Super excited to have this piece and it's a great stash buster for leftover yarn. Keep an eye out for that pattern release. I'll obviously be posting it on my Instagram when it comes out. So yeah, that's my next work in progress. All right, next work in progress. Now we're just going through the quick short projects. I started the next set, or no, I started the next sock of my dorsal socks. Not much to show here because I just cast it on. I'll just do a refresher of the yarn, the pattern. So dorsal socks are from the Handmade Sock Society Pattern Bundle Season 2 by Helen Stewart. I think the pattern is also available individually. I am using Sorella Yarns Classic Nylon Sock, which is an 80-20 nylon superwash wool sock yarn. And this is the color Toile from her Spring Tonals collection. It's this nice blue yarn. And... Yeah, really can't say much about the second sock. I think I probably won't show this to you guys until it's done and then I can show you guys the finished pair. I am trying a fish lips kiss heel on this pair of socks, which is my first time doing the fish lips kiss heel. I'm trying to really hone in on my perfect fitting socks and because this sock is mostly stockinette, I thought it was a good opportunity to try some new shaping techniques and stitch counts to really get a nice snug fit for my foot. Next project. Oh, the next project <laughs> is no longer on the needles. So if you guys saw my last video, my abandoned whips video, I went through all of my whips that I've kind of put aside for a while. And that included my Whitmore cardigan, which if you've been following me for a while, you'll know the saga. It's too big. I needed to frog it and I finally did. <laughs> So this is what's left of my Whitmore cardigan. It is completely frogged. I have a plan forward of what size to do. That'll give me the correct fit. And I'm looking forward to casting it on again, although I'm not gonna be casting it on super soon because I'm going to be prioritizing all of my summer tank tops to finish before the end of the summer. So if you missed the Whitmore cardigan, I definitely recommend you watch the Abandoned Whipped video so you guys can see sort of my thought process there and how I calculated my gauge and sizing and figured out what I should have been doing and what went wrong. I don't really want to repeat it here in case you did watch the video, so I will leave that at that. And now we're kind of transitioning into like my future plans and what is going on with the rest of my knitting projects. So I did just briefly mention that I am gonna be prioritizing all of my summer tank tops and t-shirts, which include 
you know, the Kutar top, the Audrey top, my Lanakai summer tee, which is in that nice Pinot Noir color. So those three projects I am going to be focusing on first and not really putting much time into my other projects that are maybe more fall based or not seasonally um, based, like the pair of socks. I have a hat and a shawl on the needles. All of those I am not going to be prioritizing. I really need to finish the summer tops because it's about to be August and I don't really want to be knitting summer tops in September because if I am by the time they're done I'm not going to be able to wear them for much longer. So prioritizing summer tops August is going to be all about finishing. I'm not going to let myself cast on anything new in August, just going to finish those. And if I can get into those other smaller projects after I finish the tank tops and t-shirts, then I will. But before that, really got to cast off those tanks. It's crazy because I feel like summer just started. Like I was looking at when I posted my summer plans video and it was just like a couple of videos ago. So it's kind of weird for me to say like, oh, I'm trying to wrap up summer, but I'm just trying to think practically speaking and knowing that the fall and winter is a lot longer here in Massachusetts than it is in the summer. I want to get some fall projects on the needles. I am looking longingly at my stash of wool and mohair and just really want to cast on all of the fall knits, all of the chunky sweaters and mohair sweaters and slipovers, but I am going to be focusing on my summer knits first and sort of use that as motivation. Like the sooner I finish my summer projects, the sooner I can cast on my fall projects. I think the month of September for me is going to be that really concrete transition month into fall, even though September is technically still summer according to the calendar for my knitting life. I'm going to be using it as the beginning of fall. I have a, my fall plans are pretty much already locked in. So I'm excited to share those with you guys at a later date. But to do that, I need to start clearing out my needles. Also speaking about future plans, I think it's a great segue into some new yarn that I got. My first Woolberry Fiber Co. pre-order arrived from the Caboose Collection. This is what I got. Oh, so excited to share this with you guys. The pre-order was a while ago, so I was super excited when I got the shipping notification. I got a sweater quantity of rabbit rump. <laughs> the Caboose collection was all inspired by animal behinds, <laughs> which is really funny. So I got this color rabbit rump, which was inspired by, you know, rabbits and their behinds. So it is a mostly white, or cream color base with black speckles that have a lot of color depth in them. There's like some pink and blue, and then the white also has like gray in it. So I am really curious to see how this knits up. I got the Berry Sock. This is the Berry Cozy Sock base. So it's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, two ply, you get 400 yards for 100 grams. My intention is to make the Lento sweater, which was made really popular last year with a Lento knit along. I feel like I'm always behind with like the hype projects. I feel like I need to see everyone else make it before I decide to make it myself. So I do need to get some Surrey alpaca to pair with this. My intention is just to get like a plain white Surrey alpaca. I think it'll go well with this mostly white and somewhat speckled yarn. I am curious to see how the speckles lay out when I knit this, especially with a plain Surrey. I think it is gonna be like a mostly white sweater with just some color splashes, which I think will look really cute. I have no idea when I'm going to cast that on, so these are probably gonna sit in my yarn shelf for a little bit, but that's okay. I will enjoy my time looking at them until it's time to wind these up for the Lento sweater. And then I did also get a sock set. So this is the Hummingbird Heine sock set. I think Hummingbird Heine is the color name for this pink, which is the main color. Also in Berry Cozy Sock, the 8020, this beautiful pink color with a lot of different color dimension in there, like some dark pink, some orange. And then I don't remember the name of the mini skein, but it's just this beautiful Grello. I've never used the word Grello before, but I'm really excited that I got the chance to. <laughs> but yeah, it's this really nice sort of green yellow tonal color in the mini skein. And I feel like I was inspired for this sock set by the 
Cider House Sock Pattern by Summer Lee and also by True Lane who knit that pattern with a similar color schemed sock set. I think also from Woolberry. It was like a pink main color and then like a yellowy accent color and I just loved True Lane's pair of socks. So I was really excited to pick up this sock set to probably make those same socks one day this fall. So yeah, this is my Woolberry pre-order. Super excited to try these out. I've heard nothing but good things about Woolberry Fiber Co. I was super tempted to buy her new linen drop that just happened like earlier this week. She had a new base in a limited quantity of, it's like a linen alpaca silk blend, perfect for like summer tanks or teas. And I was this close to buying some, but I had to hold out because my yarn intake has been quite high lately and it's going to be, I think, quite high for a little bit. So had to have some self-control, but this pre-order came in the mail at just the right time to satisfy my craving for some new yarn. So there it is. And that's about everything I have to share with you guys today. I am super excited to get into fall knitting, like I mentioned before. I think August might be, you know, a lot of finished objects, not a lot of new cast-ons, just to give you guys a heads up. So I am looking forward to starting to usher in the fall. I'm definitely more of a fall winter person rather than a summer person. So I think it makes sense that my knitting interests would match that. I think I've heard some other knitters say that they're kind of done with summer knits and I feel like I've exhausted a lot of my summer knitting capability. Although I feel like I have surprised myself with how much summer knitting I've gotten done. I feel like going into the summer, I had a negative outlook on summer knits because a lot of my past summer knitting projects have been somewhat like unsuccessful like I didn't enjoy wearing them I kind of thought they were a waste of time so I'm pretty happy with all of my summer knitting projects so far I think it kind of renewed my interest in summer knitting and I'm glad that I've had like a good time period of cranking out the tank tops and t-shirts and trying new fibers but I know my wool and mohair and chunky sweaters and oversized knits are calling my name so hopefully that interest and love for sweaters will motivate me to finish these tank tops and t-shirts so looking forward to sharing those with you guys in the next few weeks thank you guys so much for watching as usual thank you guys for subscribing we are close to 10k subscribers which is absolutely insane i can't believe it so just Again, a huge thank you to you guys for following along with me and my knitting life and my knitting projects. It's meant so much to me this past year. Looking forward to making new videos for you guys as much as I can. So if you don't subscribe already and really like my content, it would mean a lot to me if you did. And with that, I will leave you guys to your knitting and your day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.